Welcome to the Chemist Chick with Helen Nichols. True stories from behind the pharmacy counter. Well, hello, potties. Back again. And guess what? She's back. (laughs) (laughs) Marie's back here in the studio slash slash kitchen thing. Um, oh my God. So good to have you back, buddy. Thanks, Helen. And uh, we've already had our little, um, what is it? Our little baby Prosecco Rosé Brown Brothers. Very nice. If they're listening, I I do, you know, take side bets. Um, now, Marie, we've just been discussing. Yes. Mount Isa and your days in Mount Isa. And you're in pharmacy then. I was in pharmacy. And you have a funny story to tell our listeners. Go, go do it. Go on. All right, so I loved it, Mad Isa. When I got there, it was a bit of a shock. It took me a few years to become acclimatised. Yeah. About 40 degrees for about seven or eight months of the year. But anyway, yes, I, I was very lucky there. And um, I had a job with uh, Menzies Pharmacy, it was called. And it was it was the best. It was the one in town. Anyway, so... I, I was what year was this? What year were we talking about? We are talking about 1970, perhaps. Okay, 70, yep. Yep, and um, so I got along quite well. My boss was very, very nice. He was a really good man. He was an eligible bachelor, oh, but yeah. I wasn't interested. Oh, no, 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 I was, no. I was, I was with another eligible bachelor at the time. Yeah. But anyway, so, and there was a family of them. So next door was uh, an, a um, news agent, and I had worked in there previously, but now I'm in the pharmacy. So his brother bought the news agency, and he was a bit of a smart ass. Right. But anyway, so, so being so hot out there, we always had a, a big bottle of plastic bottle of water in the fridge. Yeah, and um, and also my um, cousin married a Swedish girl whose parents owned the uh, egg farm. So we used to get eggs in. Once they found that I could, I had access to fresh eggs. We used to get eggs in every week and sell them to the customers. And, blah, blah, blah. and so there was always, uh, you know, eggs on them. So anyway, so at this particular day, because we always had a big bottle of cold water in the fridge, um, I'd come back from lunch and it was quite hot. And anyway, so next door news agency man who's getting richer by the day um, comes in and had a drink out of the plastic water bottle and there was just a little bit left in it and he happened was standing behind me and he splashed it at me on the back of my neck and head. And, you know, I feel like oh, I knew it's something yeah. I can't appreciate that. No, and they didn't like it. So that felt. I picked up an oh. egg and I spun around and I said, you mongrel, and I threw the egg at him, only from about very close proximity. He, he raised up the, <laughs> pulled up the plastic bottle in front of him and shot off and hit the wall <laughs> and he's going, Oh, Jesus Christ, and ran out the back door. But you got him with the egg. I knocked him. My oh, wife oh. came out and said, so what's going on? Oh. And we didn't, there was no swearing. He didn't say what the, you know. Yeah. Um, and I said, well, he 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 put water on me and, and I didn't like it and, and I threw an egg at him. And he goes, Jesus, where, where, did you get him? I said, no. And he says, where's the egg? I said, it's over there running down the wall. <laughs> so every time after that we were, you know. Oh, he kept us Yeah, but yeah. you knew I'd get him again. Yeah. You know, yeah, well, if, you, if you're friends with someone, you get, you know, try to get away with that yes. shit. But yes. Good on you. That's really fun. I, I won it out there. Yeah. Well, I bet. I bet this has got a million stories about I had, Mount Isa. But not for the podcast. Not for the podcast today. We'll get no. into it. But you, every time I see you, you give me little notes. You say this, that, and that. And I don't know. Don't forget them. Yeah, one. I know. That's why I jot them down. That's why I jot them down, darling. That's why I jot them down. <laughs> Um, so I, I go through all these notes within a book that says Marie, and I'm just laughing at the titles. And I haven't heard these stories. I tell Marie I don't want to hear them till we're recording because I want to get the first, you know, away. Yeah. Because when I'm telling my stories, they might be funny, yeah, I know. but I don't think they're funny because I've already heard them. Yeah. You're listening to The Chemist Chick with Helen Nichols. True stories from behind the pharmacy counter. So I've dropped, you told me to jot this down. So mm-hmm. Marie, all I've got here is battery up asked was vibrating. Now, I'm sure this isn't a religious um, story. So <laughs> just go for it, Marie. What is the balance? When I came had... back here to the coast after working in Meadows for a long, long time, um, I got a, I had a, my friends, my family owned a, a 
were friends with a family who owned a pharmacy. So I, I just, just slotted in. They said, go down and put your name in, you're down. So where we worked was, um, it was a very big pharmacy, a really big pharmacy for those days. And there was a checkout front and checkout the back. And um, so I went on the front checkout. And just opposite the checkout was a big glass window. And that was a photography um, area where you could bring your photos in and have them processed in an hour, you know, special price, two for one, da, 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 da. And uh, also, sometimes people used to bring things in that weren't, you know, all that. Oh, no, I know. So got they had a thing where you, put a, where you put a towel over the prints when they were coming out. So you couldn't see the photos. That's right. Through the glass window. Yes. Yeah. So, um, and I mean, it was quite funny in there. The girls were nice. We, we actually put the, uh, they actually put the store boy in there. He wanted to have a better job than going out the store. And so he went in there and he was a boy from country boy, lovely boy. But, you know, so the first day, your photos will be back in an hour. Someone comes back and says, oh, my photos, I'll come for my photos. And he goes, oh, so, you know, Mr. Brown wants his photos. And they go, oh, it's a, not quite ready. There'll be another 10 minutes. He goes, they're not ready yet, mate. Won't be long. He says, what do you mean they're not ready? And he said, well, they haven't come out yet, you know. He says, what sort of a place is this? So what does young fella does? Leap over the counter, grab him by the th- shirt, shake him and say, do you want to get your head punched in your butt? And they're all going, oh, 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 of this guy who has a vibrator up his, you know. His, who are, yeah. Yeah. And a vi- vibrating vibrator. And there's come, there are all these pictures coming out of how he's cut the vibrator up yes. his, up his, yeah, up his cra- the, clacker. Uh, that, yeah, up his clacker. That, up his clacker. And the photos oh, are coming oh, through the oh story. God, and all the people are gathering oh, through the window. Oh, they're disgusting. I was like, oh, 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 that's a good one. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, so I ran out the story into the photographic saying, what? Oh God, when we did DNP in Sydney and I'm talking early seventies and people had they you had to pick them up in a week mm-hmm. then. There was no hour of business. Mm-hmm. And us girls, we'd go through all the photos and we'd look at all the not and Friday nights we'd get them out, oh look at Mrs. Smith's photo. Oh, because she didn't know what he got. And we looked at everyone. I'm sorry, we did. We looked at everyone. We couldn't help it. Everybody out there, we looked at your photos. You a bunch of dirty bastards. And that's the end of it, right? So, but this one day, this guy, like he had some really serious, like, how can I say it delicately? Yeah. Um, like, I rate it. Well, he had, he, had, he, he had pictures of his private at a, <laughs> he was standing at a tenement. Oh, so, oh, oh, so many. Like, he really loved his, his old fella. Yeah. And we're laughing at everything. So he comes up to the counter and I said, right now, I'm just going to check these for colour correction <laughs> for you. And he goes, no, no, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Don't worry. I'm sure you don't want to check to make sure that, you know, that they're all right. And no, no, they were all right. Pinkish colour. I mean, a pinkish colour. And then, God, he went all red and grabbed his photos and just bolted to the door. We laughed oh. and laughed and laughed because he was just a nervous wreck. But anyhow, so I've got like, but your story. I'm just done with this. I've just thought of another one. Oh, go on. Talk about what you wanted. The pharmacy. It was uh, the same pharmacy quite a long time later. I was, I, was, I was a bit more sure of myself. So anyway, it was Christmas Eve and we had special two for the price of one, your photos. Yeah. Anyway, so Christmas Eve, we were all... Christmas all, Eve? Yeah, we were. And anyway, the time had passed when, you know, this guy walked in, but it was 5.30, and he said, oh, yeah, I want I want two for one deal on all of these here, these pictures here. And I thought, oh, my God, yeah, so it's, it's, it's closed. <laughs> anyway, so I said, well, we're really close. He goes, no, the door's open. I got in here. Oh, okay. So I went and asked the boss, and he goes, oh, and... I said, one, and I said, oh, you said, oh, it's Christmas Eve, let him have them. And I said, well, he's got nine of them. Nine of them? I said, yes. And he says, nine, nine rolls of film. Nine rolls of film. Oh, for f- And he goes, oh, go on, let him have them. And so I come back down. And he was an asshole. I come back down. I said, yes, we can do that for you. And so I get out the, the thing, you know, I, I start, I said, no, you name it. And my postcode. And I said, well, we don't really need your postcode. I said, my postcode. Right, postcode. Postcode. <laughs> <laughs> And so I arrived there and then I'll tear that off because it's got one 
per envelope one. Yeah, yeah, I'm, and I'm a bit odd in peace, yeah. And then he goes, well, you're not going to write out an envelope for every one. Well, you had to. I said, I said yes, well, that's what it says. Yeah, we had to. Yeah. And he goes, well, well that's, that's ridiculous. He said, well, hurry up and start writing them. And I said, listen, settle down. And he goes, oh, I don't know. And I said, well, you shut your mouth. Just shut up. <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> the hurry up. And I said, shut your mouth. I said, did you just say this horrible up for us on Christmas Eve? Yes, or do you like that with everybody? I said, just shut up. And I could hear one of the girls going, oh, my God, quick, go and get the boys, hurry up. I was like, Maria's about to get all catch up. Yeah. yeah. Boys come running down. Yeah, happy, running down. happy fucking Christmas. Said, What's going on here? You know what I said? Oh, she was rude to me. Oh. <laughs> he says, I don't think so. Another word out of your mate and you can get out of here. That's in the days when the bosses stood up for you, but they don't today Ooh. because it's all about the yep. oh, <laughs> almighty dollar. Um but that's what I've had bosses come out and say, you can fuck off. We don't need your money. Don't speak to my girls like that. Yeah. But well, this today you get a blast and nothing said. That was version of that. But anyway, yeah, then, and it's Christmas Eve. So down come all the and beautiful I, Christmas signs. Up go all the sale. And did you crack the champers? And then we had champers. We had yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. So everybody's really busy. That was a regular Friday night in the fall. We had a bit of a fun in the bosses. So now. What about Marie's customer service? You know, isn't she good? Like, shut up, shut up. Sorry. <laughs> so, oh, darling, oh, that, we've got one more I've written down. Oh, this is, I have no idea. Is this, is this Mount Isa? No, no, this is the same farm. Okay. So, the same farm, the same farm. Okay. The, the title you've given me is mm-hmm. a motorbike helmet mm-hmm. and a knife. Yes. So there were things oh, going on in this town where, you know, people were kind of being held up at knife point and this and that. And nice. That. Like, that's nice. And one of the one of the owners had a big, lovely big motorbike. And for some reason, he bought his motorbike on, blah, 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 and the big helmet goes right over your head and all this sort of thing, which was very lovely. So two-thirds of the way through the day, I think, oh, to be quiet, I'll do something. And I thought, oh, I know what I'll do. So I went out into the tea room and I put the big helmet right over my head. Oh, my and I... Out of the out of the drawer, and I picked out a really big knife, <laughs> and then I got it up and I fling the door open from the bench. I'm going, oh, that, <laughs> waving this knife <laughs> like Chucky. Do it now, Marie, for Christ's sake! I God, so much so, fun. so much fun. No, I oh, would know. Yeah, well, but we've got so, so much. Fun. In the days, we got away with bloody murder. Oh, I got away with it. Oh, I've been looking through all, like all my podcasts. I, I really should do a book one day about the chemist chick because I have photos for everything. Every bloody photo I've got over a thirty-year period taken in the dispensary, in the background are empty champagne bottles. <laughs> it's just crazy. But, oh, Thank Marie, you. look, it's been lovely having you yeah, near and there that age. Because of COVID and all yeah, that, you couldn't yeah. get over and Paul, my God. And now, yeah. Marie's, when was your birthday? Uh, uh, 18th of October. October. We've been trying to have a yeah. birthday lunch since then. Yes. We've cancelled about three or four times. <laughs> well, potties, guess what? Like is the thing. We're heading <laughs> off to the surf club for a drinky poo <laughs> in Sutton Wings and a few laughs. And, um... Anyhow, come back soon, Marie, because I love it. I oh, love catching I'm up to you anyhow. Right. Um, yeah, I'll take my notepad with me to lunch. Big sense. You say so much money. Big shit. old, but, you know. No, you're not. The you're as sharp, sharp as they come. Don't you worry about that. Thank you. Anyhow, let's say bye, potties. Bye, potties. See you next time. Bye. The Chemist Chick with Helen Nichols. True stories from behind the pharmacy counter. You can subscribe to the podcast at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and wherever you hear great podcasts. This has been another quality podcast from Bytes.com.